Hey guys, so I'm getting ready to do my video where I take a five terabyte system and I copy two plus terabytes of data over to that five terabyte drive to see if the system will fail, as I expect it will. But in order to do that, I needed a drive that has more than two terabytes worth of data to copy over to the five terabyte drive. So I have my son's Xbox One branded Seagate drive. This is a four terabyte drive that has uh, is nearly full. It has about 3.6 terabytes worth of data on it. And I'm going to copy that to another one, another Xbox One branded Seagate drive. It's also a four terabyte drive. And this particular drive is empty. The idea being that I don't want to tie up my son's drive in this process. So I'm just going to copy everything over to here and then uh, start the copy process. Now I tried using Clonezilla to clone this drive to this drive. And even though I tried to force a sector by sector copy, it still complained that it couldn't read the format of the source drive. So there's a tool, and that's what I'm going to show you in this video that you can use to make it possible to see an Xbox One external formatted drive on a Windows system. It basically makes it turns it into a standard NTFS drive. There's just a slight bit change that you need to do on these drives to make the partitioning scheme readable on Windows. Anyways, after doing that, it still wasn't enough to do the copy. When I did that, it started complaining that the destination drive was too small, even though they're of equal size. So for whatever reason, I was just having too much trouble with Clonezilla. So I thought it would be interesting to see if there was an easier way to do it, and one that I think most people would, would prefer anyways, which will allow you to see the data and copy the individual files. In fact, you can copy individual games if you knew which files actually contained the game that you wanted to copy. Okay, so let's get started here. So let's get over to our Windows screen. And what we'll do is we'll shrink this down. This is the actual RAR file that I'll have linked in the description that you can download. Contained within this, if we open the archive with 7-zip, is a readme file and the actual tool for converting an Xbox One external drive to be seeable on Windows. And I'll show you what I mean here. So here's our actual Xbox One drive converter tool here. Now, I have a 7-port USB 3.0 hub. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up each of these drives. So we're going to take the, the drive labeled Xbox One 4, and we're going to hook that drive in first. This is going to be our source drive. Not that it really matters the order that I'm going to do this in, but just so we're keeping it straight. And then I'm going to plug in this drive second, the Xbox One 3 label drive. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but the lights are now on the two drives. And what we're going to want to do is right click our Xbox One drive converter tool and say run as administrator. And say yes to if you want to run the tool. I know you can't see that in my display capture. And once you have that open, we're going to click scan. And you can see right away we're, we found two drives. They're both in Xbox mode. And I'm also going to open our trusty diskmgmt.msc, so basically the disk management program. And you can see here that Disk Manager can't access either of these drives and wants you to initialize it. You don't want to do that. There's some byte switching that's going on for the partition table, which makes it so that the drives appear as uh, not having a valid partition table or GPT partition table, even though they actually do. And that's what this tool fixes. So here's our disk three and four, and here's our three and four. So what we're going to want to do is right click three here and we're going to say enable PC mode and we're going to do the same for the other disk as well enable PC mode and then we're going to click scan again and when we do that we'll see we can see that both our drives are now in PC mode but if we go down here we do a refresh we can see that we still can't see the content of these drives I take that back actually we can see the content of these drives and they were given drive letters. Okay, in the past I actually 
went through, and you may have to do this to get this to work, which is you go here and you safely eject and then reconnect both the drives. But um, I was able to just do a refresh and get the drives to show up. So let's open a, an Explorer window here. Okay, so let's bring this over. And I'm actually going to close. You can see both our drives here, but um, we don't need to see them through this entire process. And so here is our, bring this down, here's our D and G drives. And we can see it here. So our G drive is empty, and our D drive has a ton of stuff in it. So we're going to actually go into our D. Okay, so we're going to want to select all these files here on this D drive. So we're going to click Home and we're going to say select all and we're going to click home again and we're going to say copy and then we're going to click on our G drive we'll click home again and we're going to do paste so you see it's going to copy about 3.5 terabytes of data from D to G so let's see if we can get a rough estimate on how long this is going to take Okay, so you can see the entire copy process is going to take about 11 hours, so I am going to move on to doing some other things, but I wanted to basically show you how you copy one external drive to another. These two drives here. And when we want to, before we attach these back to our Xbox One system, we're going to want to just, well, once the copy is complete, we're just going to want to right click and enable Xbox mode. And again, do the same for both drives. And then just go down here and eject both drives and attach them back up to our Xbox One system, and we should be good to go. Now, the result of this will be in one of my upcoming videos where I will show you guys actually copying the data from this drive here to my five terabyte Xbox One system. So I'll see you guys in that video, but I thought this would be kind of a quick tip, quick video to show you guys how you can copy data between external drives. Now I'm sure people have better methods for doing this or other methods for doing this. So please feel free to suggest other methods or methods that you've used in the past in the comments of this video. So I'll see you guys in my next video.